Hello, it's John from Birmingham here. I'm here with Ian Crane. Hi, Ian, how are you? Hey, John, how are you doing? Very good, mate. Good to see you. Thanks very much last night for uh, speaking to us at Truth Juice, Birmingham. Absolutely. And pleasure. anybody who's not familiar with Ian's work, um, you cover a lot of different aspects the EU, Codex Elementarius. Last night was about the BP oil rig catastrophe, uh, which happened earlier in 2010. And uh, I would suggest anyone that hasn't seen it to go and look at that presentation that Ian's done. It's on the internet. Uh, very, very important information. Um, the, the presentation started looking at uh, BP as uh, as a whole and, and as a corporation and as um, an entity within the world. But after this rig, oil rig explosion, um, it became apparent to you and many others that this was a contrived event. Um, can you expand shortly for, for me on that? Well, it took a while. I mean, I didn't immediately assume it was a contrived event. Although I perhaps should have done, of course, because the, the day before, I had actually sent out um, a newsletter uh, to um, you know, my global readership, which numbers about 8,500 or so. Um, but uh, April the 19th was very much um, imprinted on my brain because it's the day of sacrifice by fire in the belief system of those who think they are the rightful rulers of a planetary fiefdom. I mean, April the 19th, 1993 was the day of the uh, Waco firestorm which killed, I think uh, it's estimated, somewhere between 72 and 99 people, many of them young children because the burning Waco uh, complex, the Davidian complex, collapsed on top of them and so many of the remains were very badly charred. Two years later, on April the 19th, we had the supposed lone gunman attack of Timothy McVeigh planting his truck bomb outside of the Alfred P. Murrah building, supposedly as a revenge attack for what had occurred in uh, Waco, an attack on the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms Division of the FBI, which had its Oklahoma headquarters in the Alfred P. Murrah building. But nobody from the ATF was actually in work that day. Um, but tragically, uh, many children were killed in that attack um, because uh, there was a nursery, I think, on the first floor of the building, which you know, yeah. uh, obviously uh, was destroyed in the collapse. But if you look at the photographic evidence of the Alfred P. Murrah building, it's, um, there's no way that an external truck bomb caused that magnitude of damage. The bombs were clearly inside the building, and I say bombs because it is plural. And there's, there was news footage from the time that was broadcast once and once only, which reported the fact that there were unexploded bombs that had been discovered, which is why the emergency services were not permitted to enter into the, uh, the building because of concerns of more ordnance there. Um, April 20th, 1999 was the day of the Columbine High School massacre, and you know, if you Google April 19th, 20th, you can find there have been a number of events. World War One started on April 20th? Is, is that right? Well, it was yeah. either World War One or two, definitely. Well, it wasn't two, because that was September the 3rd. Right, so uh, it must be one. so it must be one. Um, um, so, you know, it's Hitler's birthday, April 20th. It's also the British Queen's birthday. So, uh, it's actually, April the 19th is also the day in 2005 when the current Pope was appointed to his current position. So April the 19th, 20th certainly has some very significant um, um, meaning within the occult belief system of those who think they are the rightful rulers of the planet. So I sent out my newsletter and of course nothing happened European time on the 20th. But when I woke up on the morning of the 21st, I already had a number of emails from people who were asking me if the uh, Gulf Coast event um, was what I'd been talking about. And initially I said, no, I didn't think so because I have 20 years in the oil industry with a company called Schlumberger. And so I didn't really want to believe that my former colleagues would ever stoop to perpetrating in such an event. Um, and I even actually spoke at a conference in California in the middle of May, uh, a conference on deep geopolitics. And even at that event, I resisted the temptation to suggest that it was a, a force flag event, even though I was beginning to suspect that it was, but I didn't have the piece, final piece of jigsaw that I was looking for to confirm that it was deliberately perpetrated. But one week after returning from California, absolutely, um, you know, things fell into place, and I realised that not only was this a, 
uh, perpetrated event, but I was able to actually identify the individual who was placed on the rig to make it happen. Now, I, I'm not suggesting that that individual was the architect. He was simply the mechanic. He was put on the rig to make it happen. And in the presentation that is available um, elsewhere on the web, um, I you know, explain the sequence of events um, which were orchestrated to put this individual onto the rig and how this individual orchestrated the uh, disaster occurring. Now, I have been making this observation um, since basically the beginning of July. It's been out, I've released a DVD on July the 23rd called BP, Population Reduction and the End of an Age. I've given this presentation probably 25 plus times in the last uh, four months. Uh, it's been recorded on a number of occasions. It's up on YouTube and of course basically it's ignored. It's certainly ignored by the mainstream, it's certainly ignored by BP. Their tactic is to just hope that by ignoring it you know, not enough people will uh, will see it and it won't go viral. You were saying your Amazon account, there's a strange thing where you, people can't Very actually strange. search for the DVD, yeah. yet you can see it is available exactly. I mean, in I your can seller's account. I my seller account and I can see that the DVD is there. It's BP, D Population Reduction and the End of an Age. But even if you go onto Amazon's own search tool and you pump in Ian Crane BP, you cannot find this DVD. No matches. Yeah, there's no matches at all. So it doesn't really surprise me that you know, BP's corporatism has brought this pressure to bear on Amazon because BP have also successfully managed to get every single photographic image of the two critical persons of interest, to use the Gulf Coast hearing terminology, um, they've managed to re get all photographic evidence removed from the web. So the two individuals who, in my opinion, are prime, the prime focus for the hearing, neither of them have appeared at the hearing, one pleading the fifth, i.e. that he doesn't want to give evidence on the grounds that any evidence he does give may be self-incriminating, and the other individual has just basically been sick the whole time. So the Gulf Coast hearing has no teeth because, as I uh, showed last night from the footage that um, I have from the Senate. Uh, although the uh, recommendation to give the Gulf Coast hearing power of subpoena was passed in the House of Representatives by 420 votes to one, mm. it didn't even get through the second reading in the That's Senate. That's incredible, it's really. A, of course it's incredible. But what it, what it demonstrates is that the US is a corporatist state. You know, there is no interest in the Senate to give the power of subpoena to the Gulf Coast hearing because basically the corporate estate does not want the people to know what occurred. And to examine them. And to examine the evidence, exactly. So, you know, what they're doing is creating the mythology that this was a series of unfortunate accidents. I mean, Halliburton haven't helped the situation by agreeing to accept some degree of mitigation. I mean, I have explained in the DVD exactly what occurred. I've explained that you know, Halliburton should probably not have pumped the, uh, the cement job because BP had already uh, compromised the design of that job. And so consequently, the cementing engineer who was on the rig should have refused to pump it, but he did. And that's all explained in the DVD. It's all explained in the DVD. And, and then uh, my former company, Schlumberger, I've explained Schlumberger's very critical involvement in the uh, in the event here um, because it was Schlumberger, it was a Schlumberger engineer running the cement bond log test who advised the um, company man, the BP company man on the rig, he advised the company man at least 12 hours before the rig blew that the rig was unstable, the well was unstable and that his prognosis was that the well was likely to blow and that the well needed to be shut in. Now we know this is counsel that the uh, BP company man chose to ignore and we also know that the Schlumberger guys left the rig at 11 o'clock. There's two conflicting stories surrounding the departure but everybody does agree that they left the rig at 11 o'clock in the morning of April 20th of 2010 and 10 hours later the rig blew. And 
the obviously the, everyone saw the images of what happened to the Gulf Coast. Absolute nat- natural disaster in terms of um, the wildlife and, and the effects on fish and the rest of it. Then, of course, BP went in and um, tried to help the situation. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Which obviously, um, well, uh, whether BP tried to help the situation is a matter of some. Well, debate. in their opinion, um, of course, what they did was they pumped in at least, and this is what they've admitted to, 1.1 million gallons of an extremely toxic chemical called Corexit 9500. There's an even more toxic version called Corexit 9527A. Now, oil is a toxin at 11.2 parts per million. Corexit is a toxin at 1.2 parts per million. And, I mean, the combination of the two is, is a, you know, obviously provides a substance of horrendous toxicity. But what the dispersant does is it, first of all, does the job that it is described as doing. It disperses the oil. But by dispersing it, what it does is it increases the footprint of the slick dramatically which of course suits BP because effectively what it also does is it pushes the um, the adjusted slick below the surface of the of the sea. Out of sight, out so of that mind. cosmetically it's all gone. You know, and, and BP uh, to, um, uh, I think some of their liability was going to be based on the magnitude of the, of the visible slick. Well, you know, by dispersing it and pushing it under the surface, then you remove it from sight. But the physical evidence of what is occurring, of course, is horrendous because the gulf is becoming a dead zone because this subsurface slick is effectively preventing natural sunlight from uh, penetrating through to the, uh, the deeper waters. And all marine life is effectively dying, you know, coupled with which um, oil stroke corrects it mix is being found inside the, uh, the fish and the shrimp and the oysters that are farmed from the Gulf. So you have a situation where 60% of all seafood consumed in the United States originates from the Gulf of Mexico. And my observation would be that that seafood is now compromised. The safety of that food is compromised. You know, I encourage people to go onto YouTube and, and uh, take a look for themselves because, you know, there are numerous people, local people, posting reports. I mean, there's one lady who's trying to ensure that real-time information comes out from the Gulf Coast region, and that's a lady called Anita Stewart. That's S-T-E-W-A-R-T. And I encourage people to Google Anita Stewart and read her blogs and look at the, the photographs and the, the film footage that she's posting because that way people will see that this uh, incident is far from over. In fact, quite the reverse. The visible immediate catastrophe, i.e. the rig exploding, burning, sinking, causing the death of 11 uh, people on the rig, but that may have been you know, just the uh, initial um, act of destruction. But what's occurring right now, potentially, potentially, is a population reduction event. And I'm not referring just to the marine life. You know, we are now getting increasing reports of people being sick and dying in the Gulf Coast region from the effects of the oil Corexit mix. Coupled with a naturally occurring bacteria called Vibrio vulnificus, which is a flesh-eating bacteria. Now, this bacteria you know, is known to, um, to be a risk in, in seafoods. But in the last few months, there have been a number of cases of people being infected by Vibrio vulnificus, 